Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at ordering fractions, decimals and percentages. Now in order to do that we need to be able to convert them all. So we're going to have a look at converting each a fraction, a decimal and a percentage into one another. So that's what we're going to be having a look at in this video and with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so here are the first few questions we're going to have a look at. So we're going to look at converting a decimal into a percentage and into a fraction. So for this first question here, it says write 0 0.42 as a percentage. Now hopefully, and you might already know this, but to convert a decimal into a percentage, we multiply it by 100. And there is something within the word percent which actually relates to that. And percent, that word cent, actually means 100, so it's per 100. And that's going to relate to a lot of things when we're looking at these conversions. So when we want to multiply this, it's best just to rewrite the decimal. And if we rewrite the decimal, we can write that as 0.42 nice and clearly. And hopefully you already know when you multiply by 100, we can just move the decimal two jumps to the right. And if we move that decimal two jumps to the right, that becomes 42. You could write that as 42.0, but because there's a zero at the end, we don't really need to. So for 0 0.42, we would just say that is 42%. And that is it for turning a decimal into a percentage. And the same would work the other way around. If we wanted to turn a percentage into a decimal, we would just divide it by 100, and we'll see that in another part of the video. So now we've already turned a decimal into a percentage, let's have a look at this second part. It says write 0 0.42 as a fraction. Now this again is where that word percent is going to really help us because percent means per hundred. So now we've got it written as a percentage, that's much easier to now turn into a fraction. So when we are turning a decimal into a fraction, sometimes it can be easier to write it as this percentage first. Because 42% as a fraction means 42 per hundred, that word percent. So to write 42 per 100, that is literally just writing it as a fraction, 42 out of 100. And there we go, that is writing it as a fraction. Now this particular question says to give your answer in its simplest form, and that's because this fraction can simplify. So we have a look at the top and the bottom, and we see what they both divide by. Now hopefully you can spot that both of these are even, so we can definitely divide them both by 2. That might not be the biggest number, but it's certainly a number that we can do. So we're going to divide the top by 2, and also divide the bottom by 2, and then we'll see if we can simplify it again. So dividing the top by 2 will give us 21, so our numerator is going to be 21, and dividing the bottom by 2 gives us 50, so that becomes 21 out of 50. Now again, you just need to have a look and think, do these divide by anything? And hopefully you know that 21 only divides by 3 or 7. So just test that on the bottom. 50 doesn't divide by 7, the closest number to 50 would be 49, and it doesn't divide by 3. And again, there is a little trick for dividing by 3. You can add up the digits and see if they're in the 3 times table, and 5 adds 0, these digits here, add up to 5, and 5 is not in the 3 times table, so it doesn't divide by 3. So a little discussion there on just thinking about how you can simplify and tricks for simplifying as well. But that's how we're going to approach these questions. So turning the decimal into a percentage, we just multiply by 100. Again, you would divide by 100 going back the other way. And when we want to turn it into a fraction, it's best to write it as a percentage. And then you can just put it straight over 100. And then, of course, simplifying if we need to. So let's have a look at another question before you have a go. Okay, so this question here, we have got it in reverse. So it says write 35% as a decimal. So again, I'm going to write the percentage. I'm going to write it without the percent sign and just write the numbers 35. So to turn it back into a decimal, we just divide it by 100. So we hop the decimal back in two places, which would make it 0.35. Obviously, when we're writing a decimal, though, if we have a decimal point at the start there, we do want to just tidy that up and put a zero at the start. So it's 0 0.35. And there we go, that's writing it as a decimal. So very similar to our previous question. Now we want to write it as a fraction. It says write 35% as a fraction. Now of course this has already given it to us as 35%, so we can straight away put that as 35 per 100, or as a fraction, 35 out of 100. And again, that is all we need to do in terms of writing it as a fraction. 
Again, this question though does say give your answer in its simplest form, so we need to spot what they both divide by. Now hopefully you can see that because one ends in a five and one ends in a zero, that they definitely both divide by five. So we'll divide them by five to start with, and then we can always see if it divides any smaller. So 35 divided by five is seven. In fact, let's just swap back to our other color there. 35 divided by five is seven, and 100 divided by five, don't know why I put divided by two down there. We definitely wanted to divide by five, but 100 divided by five is equal to 20. So we've got the answer seven over 20. Again, the top the numerator there, seven only divides by one or seven, and 20 doesn't divide by seven. Not perfectly anyway, and we are looking for a number that fits in perfectly. So our answers there was 0.35 for our decimal, and seven over 20 as our simplified fraction. So let's have a look at a couple of questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions here, so pause the video there, have a go at answering these, and we'll go over the answers in just a sec. Okay, so for the first one then, 0 0.45 as a percentage, if we times that by 100, we get 45%. Writing that as a fraction is 45 over 100, and they both divide by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9, and 100 divided by 5 is 20, and they don't divide by anything else. So we get our final answer of 9 over 20. So 45% and 9 over 20 are our answers for our first question. Okay, so for our next one, you've got to be quite careful. Writing 8% as a decimal, when we write the 8 and we jump over the 8, we then have to jump over nothing. So our decimal just ends up here. So when you tidy this up, you have to put a 0 under that loop and a 0 at the start. So our final answer for writing that as a decimal is 0 0.08. So hopefully you're okay with that one, but slightly different to what I went over. Now it says write 8% as a fraction, giving it in its simplest form, so we can straight away put that as 8 over 100, and then hopefully you can see that they both divide by 2. If they divide by a larger number, that's fine as well, but if I go for dividing by 2, we get 4 over 50, but now again it does actually divide by 2. So we could have divided by 4 in the first place, but let's just keep on dividing by 2, and we get the answer 2 over 25. Now they don't divide by anything else, so we have reached our final answer, but of course in that step there you could have just divided by 4 and that would have gotten you straight to that final answer. So there we go, there are the answers for these first practice questions, now let's have a look at converting a fraction. Okay, so just these two for converting a fraction. Now the first one here is quite a nice one and you might already know what that is as a percentage, and that's fine, but we're going to have a look at the method for going about it. So when we have 1 over 4 and we want to write it as a percentage, not forgetting that that word percent means per 100, we want that denominator to be out of 100. Once it's out of 100, we can see what it is out of 100, and then we can write that percentage. So first of all, we need to think to ourselves, what do we multiply 4 by to actually get to that 100 on the bottom? And hopefully you can spot that that number is 25. Of course, if you're not sure, you could do 100 divided by 4, and some working out to the side to figure it out, but remembering whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top, so 1 times 25 on the top gives us 25. Now it is a uh, fraction over 100, per 100 it's 25 per 100, so that will equal 25%. And there we go, we've got our percentage. So our process for this is to turn our fraction out of 100, and then basically just reading the numerator. For our next question, it does say to write it as a decimal. So to write it as a decimal, we'll first turn it into a percentage. And then again, once it's a percentage, we can just hop the decimal before it and divide by 100 to get our decimal. So for 3 over 5, again, we just need to spot what are we going to multiply the denominator by to make it out of 100. And that number that we need to multiply by for 5 is 20. Again, you could work that out. But if we multiply the top by 20 as well, 3 times 20 is equal to 60. Now that's 60 per 100, so that is equal to 60%. But of course we want to write that as a decimal, so if we hop our decimal into jumps by dividing by 100, then that is going to give us a decimal which is 0 0.60. Of course you don't need to put the 0 at the end, so you can just write that as 0 0.6 but of course it wouldn't be wrong to write it as 0.60, but our final answer for this one is 0 0.6.
Okay, so that's how we're going to turn fractions into decimals and percentages. So let's have a look at a couple of questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your few questions. So pause the video there, have a go at these, and we'll go over the answers in just a sec. Okay, so for the first one then. So to turn 4 over 5 out of 100, you need to multiply the top and the bottom by 20. So timesing the top by 20 will give you 80, and that is 80 over 100, so that is 80%. Onto the one below, which wants it as a decimal, we've got 3 over 10. Now we want to multiply the bottom by 10 to make that out of 100. So we'll also multiply the top by 10, and that gives us 30. 30 out of 100 is equal to 30%, and 30% as a decimal is 0 0.3. Of course, you could have written your answer there as 0 0.30, or just writing it as 0 0.3. So onto our top right, this one here, we've got 3 over 4. To make 4 become 100, we need to multiply by 25, and 3 times 25 on the top would give us 75. So again, that is equal to 75%, and it only wanted this one as a percentage, so that's our final answer. And onto our final question here, 13 over 20. To get 20 to become 100, you have to multiply it by 5. So we need to multiply the top by 5 as well, and 13 times 5 gives us the answer 65. Again, you could do this with working out, but 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 3 is 15, and add them together, 50 and 15 gets us 65. Again, writing that as a percentage first is 65%, and if we divide that by 100, we get 0 0.65. And there we go, that is our final answer, writing that as a decimal. So hopefully you found those okay, now we're going to have a look at ordering them when we have a combination of all three. Okay, so it says here, write the following numbers in ascending order. Now ascending order means smallest to biggest. So we need to find out which of these is the smallest, which is the biggest, and put them in order. Of course, at the moment, we have a decimal, we have a fraction, we have a percentage, another fraction, and another decimal. So it's not very nice to order them as they look. So the best thing to do on a question like this is to turn them all into the same format. Now, well, you might have noticed on the previous questions, but with all of them, we used percentages. So personal preference for me, I like to write them all as a percentage. So first of all, why don't we just try converting them all into a percentage? Of course, you could try something else here, but I do think the percentages are the much easier way in order to do this. So for the first one, 0 0.30, of, and of course, don't forget that you can put a 0 at the end there, because then when we multiply that by 100, it gives us 30%. So our first one is 30%. For the second one, we want to turn that into a fraction over 100. Of course, if you just know this already, then that is fine. But 1 over 4 would become 25 over 100. So that one there is 25%. Of course, if you just know that, that's fine as well. You don't have to show the working out for that as long as you're confident with it. Now, the third one is already written as a percentage, so that's nice and easy, 28%. The next one's a fraction. So again, let's think about how we would turn that into a percentage. 6 over 25, we would want to multiply the top and bottom by 4 to make it over 100, and 6 times 4 is 24, so that becomes 24%. And then for our final question here, or our final part of this question, we've got a decimal. So if we times that by 100, and we hop the decimal, it's going to jump over the 9. So that is going to become 29.5. And there's our first part where we've had a decimal inside our percentage. But that's fine as well, it's just 29.5%. So let's get rid of our working out and then let's think about which one of these is the smallest and then we'll put them in order. Now when, it, when you're doing this question, it says write the following numbers in order. It doesn't say to write these percentages in order. So we do have to write the original parts of the question in the appropriate order. But before we do that, I'm going to order them from the smallest. So hopefully you can spot 24% is our first smallest number. We then have 25%, which is our second. Then we have 28%. Then we have 30%. And then, actually, I've missed out the 29.5. Our fourth smallest was definitely the 29.5%. And then we have our 30%. So as you've just seen, always be very careful and check that you've read all the numbers carefully. So now we've got that done, let's just write the original parts in order. So the first one was the 24%, and that was 6 over 25. 
The next one was the 25% and that was 1 over 4. The next one was 28% and that was already a percentage so that's fine to leave it. The next one was the 29.5% which is 0 0.295 and the final and biggest part was the 0 0.3. And there we go, we've written them all in ascending order using our conversions. So obviously there's no new maths there other than with having to do all of them in one question. So let's have a look at a question for you to have a go at to finish this video. Okay, so here's your question to have a go at. So pause the video there, have a go at this one, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Okay, so for the first one then. If we turn this into a percentage, multiply it by 100, hopping the decimal twice gives us 73.5%. The next one, 7 over 10, gives us 70 over 100, which is 70%. The next one is already a percentage, that's 75%. The next one here, if we times the top and bottom by 20, we get 80 over 100, which is 80%. And then the final part is a decimal, again timesing that by 100 gives us 72%. So now we've got them all in percentages, we can write them all in order. So let's order them first, 70 is the smallest. And be careful this time, 72 is the next, 73.5 is the next, then 75% and then 80%. So the original piece is in order, 7 over 10. Our second one was 0 0.72. Our third was 0 0.735. Our fourth was 75%. And our fifth and largest was the 4 over 5. And there we go, that is all of our pieces in ascending order. So there we go, that's how we're going to go about doing these fraction, decimal and percentage conversions. I hope you found that useful and helpful. Don't forget to look into the description for the rest of the series, and I will see you for the next video.